Okay, this is a, this is a quick little update on a, um, a soldering station. Little vid I did, which was just basically so I've got this soldering station and these were the functions on it. Uh, yeah, you know, I got an air fan speed controller on off for the air, on off for this for the solder iron, and you can set your temperatures on both air and solder uh, solder iron by using these. I'd like to switch it on, but in the two months that I've had it, uh, it well, it was fine. Uh, the temperature I think goes up and down a little bit, but. Uh, you know, because I try and set it so I don't. Oh, oh I, I can't explain it, but the, the temperatures it just seemed like it was going up and down a little bit. Sometimes the the tip would get too mucked up too quickly, like it was on too hot or something. But I purposely got it set quite cool. Anyway, but first of all, the um, the ring that goes around this is very brittle and. It doesn't take a great deal of heat before bits start cracking off it. It's a black plastic ring which sort of like holds all this down. And you know, you've got the electricals in here. This rubber um, like sleeving and it and it does stick out quite quite well there. It gets very hot. You know, when you're using it. Um, it does get very hot. My, my fingers tend to creep a little bit for a bit of extra control, and uh, and it and it does get very very hot. And without that sleeving there, I'm sure this would be a. It'd be quite hard to use it on anything above 340, and that's all I use it on generally 340, 360 tops. Uh, I don't feel any need to use it, but I've had to stick all this together with several different uh, layers of different insulating tape. Just one, so I can uh, so I can carry on using it while I wait for another another iron to come because you can't seem to get just these plastic uh, rings, which is a little bit annoying. The the place I bought this from, uh, I can put it down in the. I don't have it offhand. I can put it down in the description though. But the place that I bought this from, off eBay doesn't really offer any um, any spares advice or anything. They told me to go and check my local hardware shop, which I thought was going to be quite difficult for some Chinese generic, loads of different names on it. You know, would would my old boy at the hardware store know know where to get one of these? But anyway, um, there's a seller on eBay that uh, will actually find parts and well they, they said that they can get uh, a new iron for me so and I've, I've ordered one off them so hopefully that's going to come through. I'll, if anybody wants that just let me know and I'll uh, I'll put a link for them in there as well. So you know I get past that still using it. It's a little worried that it's just going to pull apart on me but today I go to use it <laughs> Uh, I just flick it on, flick it on at the back, flick it on as normal, you know, it's temperatures all preset and everything. I go and make my cup of tea, come back in, go to use it, because I've got my first little project I've got to, I've got to do, and I go to use it, and the iron's cold. So I have a look, and it says 008 dot. And the dot, the normal temperature thing, it flashes to say it's, you know, it's, um, going to temperature or it's at temperature or whatever, it just flashes anyway. It was just stationary, it wasn't moving at all. So I'm thinking oh god, what's wrong with this thing now? So I switch it off, switch it back on again. Wondering, you know, if that make any difference. And so I decided I emailed the company anyway to say, look, uh, this thing's because they, they offered me fifteen pounds as a refund for me locating this because they couldn't help me. And they said it's a good little gesture. And that's that's great. I said, yeah, oh, that's fantastic. So it actually covers the cost. Um, and um, I get an extra couple of pounds for a replacement. Uh, but remember, all I want is that ring. And so when I get a replacement, I'll carry on using this probably until it falls apart and then start using the other one. 
or take the ring off the other one and put it on here. I don't know. Um, whichever way it works out. You know, I'd have an extra bit of this and a bit of wire to a plug and a fuse. But, but anyway, it don't work. No. This is, I thought it was uh, part of a transistor, but it's not. It's a, uh, it's a triac. It's a, it's a triac. I can't remember which exactly number it is. Let me have a look. It is a BT135 600E. Uh, and it actually used to live there. And if I pull this down, just to try and get a little bit better. It used to live just inside there. But as you can probably see, it's all that blew the top off the triac. Or when I took it apart, this this came out. You know, when I when I took it apart, uh, this you know fell out fell out the uh, the unit as I was as I was taking it apart. Um, it's going to play some on top of there. And of course, I smelt in the back. That's the first thing I did was smell in the back. It smelt smoky. And then when I realised there was a big chunk of uh, silicon, I looked around at the at the transistors, and I just thought you just thought it was a transistor. I don't know. I didn't I didn't look up the number. But there, as you can see, look, it's actually uh, it's actually split away or something. But this is terrible. I've been having a little look after you know uh, after writing the uh, the email to the company, and I don't know if you can see this. I don't know if this is like flux but all on this side there was a hair I could see a hair inside there and I pulled it out but unfortunately it went on the floor somewhere but it's just it's dirty the the fuse holder when you try and do the fuse now I've, ti I've tightened all this up because when I went to check the fuse at the back a bit moronically because if it powered up and gave me the 008 obviously the fuse works but, uh, you know, I was just going through a procedure and uh, thinking I just checked the fuse, but this wasn't that tight and I was turning this round and all this was just twisting around on the inside and mm, everything's just stuck in with just, you know, bits of snot all over the place and this, it almost looks like this part here, which is connected to this front bit, is going to fail, it looks like it's cracking already. Um, seems to be an awful lot of wire. Yeah, I don't know, I mean maybe that's okay, maybe that's the way they're supposed to be. But I'm sure if old Davy Jones on the EV blog got older this, he'd, uh, he'd probably get a thumbs down. I mean some of these things look like they're doing okay, it looks like they've put some sticky across here to stop these from coming out with heat maybe, but look, the, the, the sticky doesn't really work, these can still come away, it's not even stuck it to it. They've, they've gone along with their, oh we better do that, but... They've done it like they were putting a snotty bit of ice cream icing on a cake. It's uh, everything just doesn't seem right, you know. Even the resistors, the way that they're put in, they're in not even putting nice to the board. And no real pride. No, everything's just glued. I don't know if you can see that the face, the front plate, that. Glue, it's a glue. I think it's better to build glue than not up anything. This unit cost me £62. I see them now for £39. I can see why they're probably dropping on price. I got told not to buy cheap Chinese. Do you know? I had a power supply that went all funny on me and the fellow told me not to buy cheap Chinese. That's all he said to me. He said, I told you, didn't I? He said, I told you. And he's right, because it seems like everything I buy, I have to fix. Or, you know, pretty much scrap. Which is a bit... It's not so good. Apart from the new power supply. And I know that's a Chinese thing. I know it is, because I've seen the schematics for it and they've been printed from the Chinese PDF system, so... I would presume that they wouldn't have orientated in America and been printed out on Chinese PDF systems. It's, 
It's um, but even you know even that's faulty. That's going back tomorrow. That's being picked up tomorrow because it doesn't go doesn't work in parallel. Look, it just goes to constant current um, and shorts. That's basically what's happening. And in serial, the same thing. So it doesn't give me my ten amps, um, which is a pity because I need ten amps. I need multiple um, voltages. So anyway, <clears throat> so yeah. So that, that, that's it, that's two months on, two months on from the video that I did about this saying I got it and great stuff, I got myself a, a temperature controlled solar station and two months later it's dead. So, I'm not impressed, I'm not impressed and you know, I like fucking around with me electronics and the only other solder in the I know, got is one of those horrible plug in the wall jobs, and it's terrible. The tip is the size of a shovel head, and you know, I just don't want to use it. And now I'm going to be quite distressed for the next period of time until I get to get a new, a new solder iron. I haven't got enough money in my bank just to go and buy one. I got to see. Yeah, never mind. So there you go. Anybody thinking about investing in one of these? You know, just take heed that they may not be as great as what you might think. And don't think because it's got a £62 price tag that you're going to get £62 worth of um, of equipment. And it doesn't seem to work like that. And I shouldn't be, you know, moaning myrtle about this. I know I shouldn't. But come on. What am I supposed to do now? I'm just glad that the toys that I needed to solder to get to work, I've done them all. And at least I've got some toys to play with that I've made myself. Um, my flyback drivers and such for my Tesla and a different one for my Jacob's Ladder. Uh, they're all working and good and I don't need to solder them otherwise I'd be probably a little depressed. Anyway, that's enough of me whining on. Um, just for the last final thoughts. I think my next solder station, or my next solder iron, because I don't really use the hot air gun so much. <laughs> Ironically, that still works. <laughs> I don't really use it. But um, I think I'll probably you know, get something like a, a Weller, or I can't afford a Heikyo, or however you're supposed to say it. I know that they're really good because they get raved up by lots of people. If anybody can suggest to me you know, a decent solder, a decent solder iron temperature controlled, um, that doesn't take up too much space. Part of the reason why I bought this was because it has got quite a small, you know, form on it, and I could pop it on top of uh, my meter there, out of the way, and it was and it was great. And it was great because it was just in the right place for me. I'm right-handed, and um, and allowed me to get everywhere I need to with the with the iron. So you know, up until it breaking and and this, I was quite happy. So in some respects, if you don't have this happen and you don't have whatever's happened in here happen thumbs up but if you do it's a thumbs down anyway thanks for watching thanks for listening catch you soon bye